Carolyn Colain is the Canada 150 Research Chair in Mathematics for Infection, Evolution and Public Health at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. She joins me now. Uh, Professor, good to see you. Thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Uh, do appreciate it. Hello. Uh, you have just completed some modeling on, on the case trajectory. We could see if these new COVID-19 variants get established in Canada. So if I can, I wanted to start there. Uh, we have some 150 cases of the variant uh, variants detected in this country so far. So does that make them established? Can I start there? Are the variants established yet in Canada? I think that's a challenge. With 150 detected, there might still be many more undetected because, of course, we're not sequencing every single case. We hope that's not true. We hope we've we've got a handle on what's here. Um, but even if the you know if there are 150 and uh, the transmission rate is higher than with regular COVID and we're somewhat struggling to control regular COVID, it's it's been hard. Um, I, I would say the chance that these are established or will establish very soon is pretty high, unfortunately. What what makes the variants, at least what we've seen so far, what what makes them so worrisome? So I think what what I'm worried about is the really strong evidence from the UK, just because they have they have such great data there, that there is a higher transmission rate, and whether that's because of better binding for for the virus to our cells, um, or or because of the other genetic changes. It has. There seems to be pretty strong evidence that, that that transmission rate is higher than what we have or have had in the variants so far. So, And that's 40 to 80 percent higher transmission. And that's just a real concern because that just means more of those contacts that, that are exposed get infected, maybe more casual contacts, maybe it can exploit the aerosol route even more efficiently or... Um, otherwise transmit to more people in the same amount of time. And that's just a concern because we're, you know, barely able to contain COVID in our own, uh, you know, the COVID that we've had so far. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, there's evidence at, at any level that the, the, you know, the tighter restrictions you have, the more measures you take, uh, they do help limit the spread of the virus in any form, whether it's the original COVID we know of or the variants. If we fail to contain it now, and I'm talking specifically about the variants, uh, what will happen and how quickly? Right. So what happens is exponential growth. Uh, that's what failure to contain means. <clears throat> and that doubling time can be faster than our doubling times with regular COVID. So you might see a doubling time of, of 10 days, for example, instead of, say, 30 days or 30 or 5 days, which had been typical in Ontario over the past uh, month or two before the decline started. Uh, what we're estimating is that the current measures, especially places like BC that are pretty flat, we're kind of containing our COVID, but those measures won't work if the transmission rate is higher, 40% higher. And so what we see is that, you know, we don't see much for a while because the, even if the variant establishes, it's, you know, three cases, 10, 20, 30. Uh, but then when that wall of exponential growth starts to become apparent, we have a doubling time that is faster and we see that exponential wall uh, in March. I think, you know, those are walls that look terrible on plots of models and they're- How, they're how terrible? Uh, they look terrible. They're they're kind of like having a flashlight. You know, that doesn't mean you're going to walk into that cliff that you see when you turn on your flashlight. It's nice to have the flashlight to see that the cliff is there, and hopefully we avoid it. So most jurisdictions in Canada have not, uh, well, all of us have acted before we started seeing 20,000 daily cases in our own province, and we'll probably do that again. So we don't let those walls go. But I think the challenge is that we need to do even more than we've than we've had to do because the transmission rate's higher. So that would mean more what? More distancing, more wider testing, more um, more or faster or different contact tracing, uh, combinations of all of those things. And I think that's going to be a huge challenge if, so, it, if it does come to that. So where where we are then in in, uh, uh, in the sort of transmission of the variant process? And here we are. We have some provinces talking about relaxing restrictions. Uh, schools back for a lot of students in Ontario, Quebec's talking about uh, loosening some of the restrictions, other provinces as well. Is, is that a bad idea uh, until we see exactly w what these variants are doing? Yeah, it's hard to say what's a bad idea. You know, bad for what? Um, bad for risking that COVID variants with high transmission uh, rise in frequency. Yeah, that, that's, that's a huge risk that we're taking. That said, I do think we need a strategic plan, and I think that strategic plan needs to look towards reopening. We can't be waiting until September under stay-at-home orders and curfews and widespread lockdowns and huge sectors mm. 
closed. I hope we don't have to. And I fear that if we don't take a strategic view now, that's what we're going to have to be doing until September. And it's tremendously damaging and tremendously expensive. I would rather see containment of this today, offsetting that problem in March, containment of the rest of COVID today, but then looking towards ways that we can reopen, ways we can use our new technologies, the rapid testing, ways that we can use um, you know, more targeted controls, more recognition of aerosols, more uh, screens and these things to kind of support reopening. Because I don't think what we want to say is, all right, then lockdowns forever because of new variants. That's not, that's not a strategic choice for Canada. All right, so lots to consider there. Uh, Caroline Colain, thanks so much for your time today and uh, looking forward to talking again. Take care. You're very welcome.